Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I know you're looking at a Windows screen right now, and that's because I wanted to talk a little bit about testing out Linux distributions if you are still on Windows. As you may know or may not know, Windows 10 is reaching end of life in October. And so that means that you can still continue to use Windows 10, but being as it is the most attacked system by malware, what we're going to see happen is more and more security vulnerabilities are going to hit Windows systems. And so what we want to talk about is some people cannot upgrade to Windows 11. Some people cannot afford to upgrade to Windows 11. And uh, some people might just be like, you know what? I just need to check my email and get on the Internet and do fun stuff. And so most of those people, if, as long as you do not have to use very specialized software that is only available on Windows, you can probably switch to Linux. Now, if you've followed my channel or you're curious about Linux, you might have heard you need to download the file and then use a tool to burn an ISO image and then boot your computer off of that image. And that is all true. But what we're going to talk about today is the application called Ventoy. And Ventoy gives you a single bootable USB drive with a lot of extra space. And uh, what the extra space does is allows you to throw as many Linux distributions on the drive as possible. You boot off of this and then you choose which distribution you use. Now, I like this and I always keep one of these around because I keep things like some utilities. Uh, Shred OS is a good utility for deleting files. RescueZilla. I usually have CloneZilla on here. I forgot to copy that over onto this list here. You can see here I have a Debian installer. I have an Arch Linux. I have Linux. Mint 22.1. I have an old version of Tails over here that does need replaced, uh, I, which I, I think I do have the latest one downloaded. It's just not right here on this list of files. So what we're going to do is kind of walk through the whole process of doing this on Windows, because as I've talked about Ventoy many times, I've always talked about it from a Linux perspective. So let's go ahead and show you how this works on Windows. So you want to head on over to the Ventoy site. Now, Ventoy does support Secure Boot, which we have talked about in the past, and I will mention it briefly here uh, once we get this drive done, and I'll explain our next steps here. But uh, uh, there might be some issues with it as well. You might see this error verification. There are options to enroll the key in your, uh, in your uh, secure boot system of your computer. Easiest way generally is just to turn secure boot off. It is not as robust of a huge security system as it was supposed to be. <laughs> like everything that they come up with and say, this is the latest thing that no one can get by. And it turns out they can. <laughs> so I generally don't uh, stress over having Secure Boot disabled on my computers. That's a choice you can make. But Ventoy, in theory, does support uh, Secure Boot. So you want to go on over to the Downloads page. And when you get to the Downloads page, there is a download here for Windows. There's one for Linux. There's a live CD, which you can use to burn onto a... Uh, onto a USB drive. So I have downloaded the Windows version and we do want to check the hash. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, I have this GTK hash application. We've talked about this on a couple of our uh, a couple of our videos in the past, particularly the ones where we're talking about switching to uh, Linux. And if I remember correctly, I think this thing sometimes has the occasion to crash. So I'm going to give it a try here. I haven't actually tested this out. Um, so let's go ahead and hash this file and then you'll see it gives us this SHA-256 and this is that hash file that we're looking at there. And we just want to compare that hash file with, oh, let me close that, oh, that's for a little bit later, uh, going over to your download key and you can see right here this is the SHA-256 sum hash. And we're just going to compare this hash. And what I generally do is I'll just spot check a couple of spots throughout here. Like, hey, if you like Russia's 2112, look at that. 2112 is embedded right in the middle. Ah, look at that. 2112 embedded right in the middle. Look at that. Uh, it starts with the same, ends with the same. So it's probably accurate. And I think uh, if we copy and pasted that in, I think this is where GTK occasionally crashed on me. So let me just double check that there. 
Uh, see, there you go. It stopped working. There you go. Uh, that's the, the issue I've always had. Now, Windows has a built-in utility. If you hit your uh, a Windows key and R, you get the prompt here. You can run a command. CMD will launch up your, uh, your uh, is it called a terminal over here? Command prompt, I guess. And we're going to go on into the desktop and verify we're in the right spot. And that Ventoy is down there at the bottom. So what we're going to run is cert util and dash, uh, it's going to be hash file and then give it the file name. So this is going to be your Ventoy uh, dash windows dot zip. And then I'm going to do SHA256, hit enter, and this will give us the key as well. So I can compare that key as well. Let me see if I can get something somewhere on the right spot there. Let me move that key to the very top. Put our terminal down here. So you can compare the key, and once again, you can see that the hash is good. So once you know that your hash is good, and uh, we've tested that there with the utilities and the GTK hash that you can download that as well. Now what we're going to do is, uh, with that zip file, you extract it, which I've already done. And uh, here is that zip file that we have. And inside of here, this is a standalone application. So you hit this. Now, the first time you hit this button, I've, I've already done this, so it's not going to show up for me a second time. First time you hit it, Windows Defender is going to throw a hissy fit. Windows Defender is going to be like, oh, my God, what is this thing? Um, because, you know, it's Windows Defender, of course. And... Um, Ventoy has not paid lots and lots and lots of money on uh, to Microsoft to verify everything. Uh, it is fully secure, safe, and open source software. Make sure you're checking that hash. Make sure you're getting it directly from their site. Now, there is VirusTotal.com, which shows up as generally safe, but there's one or two uh, third-party systems that VirusTotal says this could be malware, um, and that is just false positives. Uh, the virus total is really used as a security thing. I would not trust it that much. I uh, just want to throw that out just in case anybody happens to do that. And there's some Reddit threads about it, including Ventoy uh, showing you that. Ventoy was the first people that showed you that and said, yeah, this is an error. And it told you exactly why it does that. So what we're going to do with this uh, application here is you can see that uh, th this is... Gonna. This is the current version, and this is the version that uh, is is available. You can always keep this application here, reload it, and then it will search online and it will download and get ready the latest version. You want to come down here and you want to select uh, your device, USB disk uh, 3.0. Make sure you're using a 3.0 or higher USB drive for these, by the way. And what we can do is this is now ready to go. And you can see in the options, you can see that there's the secure boot support there uh, inside of the options. Oh, sorry about the language keeps on popping up. The, uh, the, the, my Windows computer is so wonky. I plugged in the USB drive and it says that the mouse is connected, but it doesn't work. So I have to use the touchpad now. All right. So here's your partition style. Here's your configurations. You can clear Ventoy if it's over there. You can show all devices. You can do a non-destructive install, which I believe is going to install around other files over there. We're just going to go ahead and keep it how it is. Push the install button. It will remind us that the device will be uh, formatted, and you need to double-check that multiple times. We're just going to wait for this guy to finish up here, and then we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And that was mighty quick. All right. So now you see that we have a disk drive D, which says Ventoy up there. This is now installed and ready to use. So we can close this down. We'll close this down. And I'll pull this back up here. And let's go back into our distros. And if I can copy all these guys over. I'm going to go ahead and do that. There you go. And we'll move these guys over. A little harder to do a little tiny touchpad over here. So you see now that we are 
migrating all of those distros over. These are all .iso files that I have downloaded and uh, verified. Well, I verified them before I threw this on the computer anyway. Hopefully they uh, carried over properly. So we're going to wait for these to finish up, and then I'm going to show you what the next steps are. The files have all transferred over, and now our Ventoy disk is ready to uh, to use to install or test Linux. We want to say we want to test Linux. We don't want to install it quite yet so that you get a chance to play around with a few different live Linux distributions. Now, the next step is going to be a little bit more difficult, and it is one that it, uh, I can't give you the exact details because every computer is different. I would recommend you go into your BIOS and you disable Secure Boot. The problem is, how do you get into there? Many of your computers have a one-time boot menu, which you can access with either an F12, an F11, or an F9. I do have my new MSI computer does not allow you to get into the setup mode from that one-time boot menu. Uh, so uh, you might need to look up exactly which key it is. So usually it's either Escape, Delete, or F2. One of those should probably get into your BIOS settings. Uh, so or your setup utility, it might be how they're uh, calling it these days. So you might just want to look up your particular computer and figure out exactly how to do that. Now, there is a way inside of Windows that you can reboot into that setting as well. And I'll show you here where it is. On Windows 10, from your settings menu, you want to go into Update and Security. And then down on your side panel, go to Recovery. And then down here under Advanced Startup, hit this button here, and this will give you the option to go and boot into your settings of your computer. Now, on Windows 11, it is Start, Settings, System, Recovery, and then go to the Advanced Startup. So that's how you can get into it from Windows if you don't want to mess around with figuring out what the keys are. Once you're in there, you want to disable Secure Boot. That's my recommendation. Although this version of Ventoy, you should be able to keep Secure Boot turned on. And then we're going to show you what it looks like when you do that. As many laptops don't have the ability to port the data from the HDMI port on over to a monitor or in this case, a capture card. I'm going to go ahead and use my cell phone here to show you what we see when we boot into the system. So here is Ventoy, and these are all of the distros that I had booted into here. And you just simply enter whichever one you want to hit. Hit the enter. Now, this one here is the normal is your like your UEFI. Grub2 would be like an old BIOS. This computer does not support old BIOS at all. In general, you just want to use your basic startup. So here is that screen when you first start Linux Mint for the first time. And so you can kind of see that we have our options there. We'll hit that, and then we'll be going right on into a Linux Mint. So here we are booted into Linux Mint. This is the live edition. We could install it from here, but you may not want to do that yet until you're completely ready. But you can still jump in over here. You can get on the internet. You can see what that looks like. You can start this up. You can even install some software, although anything you install is going to reset once you turn this guy off. But you can get around in here. You can play around. You can see what is available in the software manager, which isn't going to generate any cash because we're not on the Internet right now. So that's a pretty bad example. But you can see that you can access all of the different applications that are already on here. If you do plug this guy into the Internet, you can get on the Internet. You can play some videos. You can uh, listen to some music. And if you're ready, you can just go ahead and install from here. So this allows us to just download as many ISOs as I want, drop those files directly onto the Ventoy disk, boot from that Ventoy disk, and then you'll see that Ventoy screen. You simply add the new ones over there, and every time it boots up, it just searches for the files and gives you the list of everything that you can boot from. So that's your best way to test from a Windows computer to test this out without having to uh, make... Uh, modifications or changes to your Windows computer, and this will allow us to uh, to test around different Linux distributions automatically without having to install anything or rewrite an ISO file every single time we download something. You might want to say, hey, I like this one. Let's test out that Zorin distribution I've heard, heard about. So you throw your Zorin on there, and then you play around with that and go, oh, that's kind of cool. Let's test out that MX Linux 
So you throw that on the drive, and now you can have a drive with multiple different Linux distributions for testing, and then eventually when you're ready, you can install one of those. So hopefully this helped you to get ready to make that move from your expired Windows, which is going to lose security in October, into a nice new secure Linux Mint or other Linux distribution, which is going to maintain security updates and prevent you from having to buy another Windows computer. So hopefully that helped out. Subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.